welcome to episode 130 of the Idea Space podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. And this month, we're talking about all the ways to make sales easier, because isn't that why you're in business? Before we get into today's topic, I'd like to ask you for your opinion. Would you kindly share your thoughts on the Idea Space podcast with a review? It's something I literally forget to ask every week, which you're going to find ironic given the topic I'm about to bring up with you. And if you do send a review, I would be so appreciative. I will be sending you many thanks and appreciations from over here in Syracuse, New York, because you've just made it easier for more people to find the information here that will help them grow their businesses. So yay. Okay, let's get going on to today's topic. Today, I'm linking the story of a divorce to sales in your own business. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so I'm starting out by telling you, I recently found out that a friend of mine got divorced in 2020, and I had completely not seen the signs anywhere. Throughout the year, I had noticed her husband wasn't in her Facebook photos anymore. I guess I figured like he was taking the pictures of her and her kids, or maybe I had just completely missed the posts of their entire family together because, you know, the algorithm. But basically, she looked busy. She looked happy. Her life was charging on like all of ours were. And so I liked and I commented and I was just glad to keep up as best I could. And frankly, when it comes to keeping up with people on social media, I don't really assign too much attachment to what I see there because think about it. Some of us are posting, you know, every bowl of oatmeal and raisins that we eat and others are just only giving us the beautiful highlight meal. And then other people are like super vague, the vague bookers who keep it really sporadic or cryptic. And I, you know, I'm just not a person who's going to do a lot of spy work to figure out what's really going on with them. So anyway, I just don't put a lot of stock in what somebody's putting on Facebook. But when I learned that this friend had actually gone through a really painful divorce in 2020, I can't say I was shocked, but I definitely had not put two and two together. And when we finally got some voice on voice action on the phone, she gave me all the details. But if I was a bit savvier, maybe I'd have surmised that something was going on in her life. But I'm not always terribly observant or savvy. And I also try not to be nosy. So when in our conversation, she spelled it all out for me, that's how I found out that she had gotten separated and divorced during 2020. So it got me thinking, like, is this the type of information that people want to be sharing publicly? Or is this even information we should expect people to share overtly with us? And the answer is, it depends. I have friends who've come right out and shared terrible or sad news via socials, and then others who keep everything to themselves 100%. And then there's still other people who will leave you some breadcrumbs, but you have to kind of go figure out what's going on with them. And I always say, like, you do you. I don't have a judgment about how you use the socials for your personal life. When it comes to your business, that is a completely different story. Because just last week, I was having a conversation with a member in my content creator studio who's struggling to ramp her business back up after a small hiatus. And she told me, she's like, I've been posting a lot. I've been showing up, but I'm getting nothing. And so I said, are you overtly telling people that you're available? Are you letting them know you have an offer? And I have to say, I kind of was chuckling because her face was absolutely priceless. She just had this complete, open, wide-eyed shock at herself. She was like, um, no, I'm not doing that. How have I not told people that I'm back and available? Again, so this idea of us hinting and expecting people to figure things out might be okay in our personal posts, but it's not okay for our businesses. So why don't we do this? Why don't we become more overt? I'm not going to talk about mindset today. I'm actually going to talk about something different. I'm going to talk about how we all become so immersed in our own lives, our own businesses, our daily little dramas that we think what we're doing, like it must be obvious to people, right? And I've actually done this myself. I mean, I am the queen of consistency. I show up all the time. I put myself out there all the time. I'm talking about entrepreneurship and content creation. I'm talking about courage. And then somebody will say to me, oh, what are you up to now, Jen? Do you still own that fitness studio? Or hey, are you still teaching at the college? And I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? What? No. Or somebody will say to me, you know, oh, I see your Instagram post. Your pictures are so beautiful. What are you up to now? And I'm like, oh, isn't it so obvious? I have a business. I have something that can help you. I have a program you can join to grow your business. Isn't it obvious? It just makes me laugh so hard because no, it isn't obvious. It just isn't obvious to everybody. What we need to understand as entrepreneurs is that 
to everyone outside of our brain, they have no idea about all the intricacies of our lives, our businesses, our offers, the services we have, the products we share. When you understand that, it will make your life so much easier because you'll realize, oh, people need me to be overt. They need me to show them the exact path of how to get to the thing that I offer. Just like with my friend, like I did not notice all the subtext there. I did not notice the hints and the nuances. She had to bang me over the head with it. That's when I knew. So what did I tell my client? The one coming off of her hiatus? Make offers, let people know you're available and then make them over and over and over again. Because like me, with what should have been a very obvious sign that my friend's husband was no longer in the picture, people will miss what you're hinting at because they'll be sliding their fingers down their phones, scrolling, 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 or half listening to your video, or they'll gloss over your call to action. So you have to tell them and tell them again. And remember that telling people and making offers is the only way to ensure that sales can happen. If you hide your offers, no one will care enough to read your mind or read through the lines or search out what you're offering. So promise yourself this week, no more breadcrumbs, no more hinting, no more waiting for people to ask, how can I work with you? What do you do? What are you offering? Instead, invite them in. Consider it asking them if they want some tea or coffee, like whatever deliciousness you're serving, you have to offer it to people because that's the only way they can take you up on it. And now you understand why my ask at the beginning of this podcast was so ridiculously ironic because I've been doing my podcast for more than two years and I've yet to come out and tell you I need some more reviews. How dumb is that? So, boy, bay, I'm taking my own medicine. I'm sharing this reminder. Please leave a review and share this podcast with somebody who can benefit from it. Please and thank you. I appreciate it so much. And one last thing, put your offers out there. Okay, I will see you next week. And I would always love to hear what you're learning from this podcast. You can leave me a review or a comment and I will be happy to respond to you. Bye.